Welcome to this edition of the Bleeding Edge. I'm Andrew Edwards. Today we're going to be uh, installing a battery or replacing a battery in an Apple iPhone. Is that right, Nate? Yes, that's true. It is true. Is Nate true? Huh? Huh? After this. When you're able to stop uh, the exploitation of a child, or you're able to find that one piece of evidence that an investigator working a homicide needs, that's what motivates you. That's what keeps you coming back. So, uh, like, like we said earlier, we're going to be replacing a battery in an iPhone, and uh, Nate, you are uh, excited about this process, despite the fact that you are voiding your warranty, is that correct? Yes. Uh, installation of a battery voids your warranty, but if your battery is dead, this is the only way you can replace it except to send it to Apple for, what is it, $100? Something like that. $100 to replace your battery, like or you can days. do it yourself. And if you order the battery kit online, it only costs $20, so you're saving a lot of money. So $20 from Apple, or? $20 from a company in Hong Kong. Hong 25 Kong. if you want to order it domestically, um, or up to like $70 if you want to order it from iFixit. Okay. And all these batteries are of equal uh, quality, I'm uh, assuming? More or less right now, because they're all being manufactured at the same time. But if you wait for the original iPhone batteries to die down, chances are the stock you buy from a third-party battery seller will also have batteries manufactured at the same time. So right. your capacity is not going to be as high. So that's something to watch for. But if you're replacing it now, uh, you shouldn't have a problem. Okay. Or if you order now and wait, is that also a... Uh... That's also bad. That's bad, because then you'll just be letting your batteries sit there. Yeah, and okay. the batteries age over time. Okay, so we don't want to do that. So if you have a problem with your battery for some reason, for example, do it yourself. if you dropped your phone in the toilet, after now, now why would you say that? Um, Who would actually, do that? this phone uh, was dropped in the toilet by uh, one Mark Johnson, and that's it disgusting. stopped working. He sent it to me. Um, <laughs> you can revive an iPhone that's dropped in the toilet by rinsing it with rubbing alcohol, 91 percent or higher, right? And just letting it dry out. Rinsing it like rinse it Sorry, off. Sorry, not or? rinsing it. Um, put it in a tub with rubbing alcohol and swish it around a little bit. Let it sit there. Make sure the water gets out of it. But you're going to have to replace the battery because the battery does get destroyed by the water. Okay, so that would be a reason if you have a broken iPhone and you're trying to repair it. Correct. If you're a DIY kind of person, this is, uh, this is for you. So what do we need to do to open this up first of all and get the battery in there? Well, Apple made it really difficult to open these phones. So um, it's not an easy process and you're likely to bend your case if you're not really good at it like I am. So also you need um, the special tools that come with the battery and a soldering iron and soldering skills, so it's not really an easy procedure, but it's doable. If you're scared, you can just watch. Yes. So should we go into close-up mode and uh, show them how it's done? Sure. Okay, close-up mode. So when you're starting out uh, attempting to change the battery, what's the first thing you need to do? Uh, first thing, definitely, you need to take out the SIM tray. So what you want to do is there's a hole on the Head, on the top edge of your phone, you need to stick something like a needle or a paper clip and push in until the SIM card tray pops out. Take it out and make sure not to lose it. Why did you need to do that for the uh, battery? The, the top of the case is held in by that SIM card tray in addition to a bunch of clips, so it needs to go in order to open the phone. Okay. So next step is to grab the green opener tool, also known as a spudger by iFixit. Where do you get that? You get it as part of the, uh, the battery replacement kit. So what you want to do is, there are a couple tabs on the top of the dock connector that you need to free first. So you want to slip the little thing right between the edge of the dock connector and the black plastic, which is actually quite difficult when you can't see it. It looks fairly difficult. Wait, where is it? Okay. So you just got to slide it in there, move back and forth to free it up. And then what you need to do is pry a little bit along the edge of one of the edges of the dock connector and the black plastic will start to pry up. Now this is the part where it gets difficult. You need to put it under and slide your green plastic around the edge 
Now this is going to be really difficult the first time you do it, so watch out. And uh, this little green thing is actually pretty sharp, so don't cut yourself. Unless that's the kind of thing you enjoy. What you're doing is scaring me right now. Is it? Yes. Because it is an expensive device, and how, if you're a novice, how easy is it for you to just ruin your phone by doing this? Um, at the moment, it's not, it's easy to damage your phone cosmetically. I mean, because the edges of the, the black plastic won't ever look the same once you've done this. Um, but as far as uh, functionality goes, as far as having a working phone, you're not going to have any, too many problems with that. Okay. Okay, so once you've got the black plastic pried up around all around the edge, you'll notice it comes up just like that. And there are a couple tabs. You'll need the little screwdriver inside that you need to pry down, or rather push down, in order to free the black plastic. And they're kind of difficult to see. You'll see, you'll notice them when you're actually in your phone. And so it will free the black plastic. So that piece comes off. Now, what you have here are the antennas of the phone. You have the Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi antenna, which is this little tiny one, and then the cell antenna, which is this bigger one. And what you'll also see are three screws, one right here, one right here, and one right here that you need to take off. There are also screws along the edge that you don't have to worry about. So, we'll remove those screws. Make sure not to lose them. They're really, really small. It helps if you have a refrigerator magnet or something to stick them to, <laughs> but it's not required. Are you sure it's not required? Um, yes. Oh. Yes, I am. So, now that the three screws are out, um, this here comes the really, really hard part. How many hard is, parts are there? There's um, this one, and then another one, <laughs> and I think two more after that, and then you're done. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you need to pry up, start with the edge where there are no buttons, and what you need to do is pry gently, because you can uh, bend the aluminum case, what you want to do is pry gently up until you've got enough space, and this is really difficult, it helps if you have like 12 hands, you want to pry gently onto this, up the side of this uh, phone, at the side of the casing, until you have enough room to stick this just under the edge. Now, what it did, it snapped open for me. That's because this phone's been opened before, but that's going to be a really, really hard step. So what you want to do is bring the green piece, or the, your opener tool, um, under the edge of the case, and just pry as, or push as hard as you can, not as hard as you can, but as hard as you have to, bringing the uh, opener tool all the way up the edge of the case until it's fully separated. And you need to do that again for the other side, which it should be easier this time, because uh, one side's already freed. And you do the same thing, run the opener tool all the way up the edge. And then what you can do is pull up the bottom of the case, like it's not doing right now. Remember to be really careful. Okay, so you pull up the case and pull it back. Watch out because Number one, if your Apple logo has become dislodged, that's going to fall out. <laughs> and there's a cable here that you'll need to disconnect. So just put your fingernail right up under it and pull it off. So the back of the case comes right off. And at this point, if you want to re-glue your Apple logo, that's a probably a good time to do it. <laughs> so now what you've got right here, you have the camera. You have the main, sorry, this is the radio board on top. The main board is just under the radio board. You have the battery, which is the subject of this video, and the antennas, which you saw earlier. So, what you want to do first is use the little green thingy again, and try and pry out the battery. Now, the battery is a soft battery. It doesn't have a metal casing around it, so the adhesive under the phone is going to cause the battery to bend a little bit. Okay, so the battery seems to take up about half the space, or two-thirds of the space inside there. Is that pretty much, uh, is that accurate? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you look at the side of the phone, you'll notice there's only screen left. So, um, this thing is packed pretty tight. So as you're moving the battery, you'll notice there are three wires that are headed right into the radio board. And they're covered by a rubbery sort of epoxy 
that you'll have to remove using a screwdriver or preferably something plastic because if you short this red wire to this casing you'll uh, superheat the battery and it may explode so watch out for that <laughs> it is a big problem so make sure you have a piece of tape handy and power up your soldering iron make sure it's set to at least 300 degrees celsius now so, will that be fahrenheit for hmm? all of us uh we don't uh, use the metric system. When you get up there into the higher ones, you don't really bother. But as Fahrenheit goes, it looks <laughs> like it's 600 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot. Yes, it is. Okay, so you've got your piece of tape ready. Now you want to disconnect the red terminal first. So you want to grab the red wire with your pliers. And try not to short the red wire out because that's important not to do. So what, for, for those who haven't done so far, what does shorting mean? Shorting is when a circuit is um, completed with consuming far too much current. Because usually this, the, the battery circuit would go from one side of the battery into the circuit doing all sorts of things and then go out into the other side. But when it's short, it means it goes directly from one side of the battery to the other. And in the case of lithium ion, in the case of lithium ion batteries, a short circuit can cause the battery to explode, which of course you've heard about on the news and stuff. So you want to grab the red wire and heat up the solder joint with your soldering iron until it comes free. Now watch out, you don't want this red wire to touch any of the iPhone case. You need to put it on your tape and just tape it off. If it did, would that short it? Correct. Okay. And what it would do, it would actually discharge a lot of current and do something called spot welding, which actually will weld the wire to whatever it touched and make it more difficult to remove later. Immediately? Yes. Wow. So, the other wires you don't have to worry about too much, but same thing, heat them up and hold on a second. and pull them off. So right now you've got a separated battery. Now, <clears throat> make sure you dispose of this properly. It contains a lot of hazardous chemicals, so don't feed <laughs> it to your children or any small dogs. Large dogs? Uh, large dogs, also not recommended, oh. but less so. So, you want to get rid of your old battery. How so? Uh, somehow. I mean, do you just throw it in the garbage, or are you saying, uh, for more information, contact your local uh, disposal authorities. Disposal authorities? Yes. See the number at the bottom of your screen. That Wait, never mind. Which is automatically adapted to your current location. <laughs> so, right now you have a phone without a battery. You'll notice that it won't power up. <laughs> because there's no battery and also there's no power button. If so, you were to dock it right now, would it turn on? It would try, but it would not turn on all the way. Okay. The little Apple logo, I think, shows up, but nothing else happens. So, so you want to take your replacement battery, which you may notice looks a lot like the battery we just took out, and, because it's the same battery, not that battery. <laughs> so you want to take your replacement battery. When you get the battery, it will also be taped up like this, and you want to make sure that that red wire doesn't short to anything. That's very important. So, you need to expose the red wire again. Make sure to remember what order these were in. Remember the red one is the furthest one out, then the white one, and then the black one toward the center. So, grab your soldering iron, and you want to start with the red wire. Now, should you go in the same order, or does it matter what order you uh, reattach? Uh, probably best to start with the red wire, just because when you have it, when you have the red wire connected and you accidentally touch the black wire to the case, all you do is accidentally power the phone. But if you have the black wire connected and you accidentally touch the red wire to the case, you are shorting out the battery and that's bad. How long before the battery will explode? Um, you've got a good minute or two minutes, so... Um, but while it's doing that, you're damaging the battery. So, now that we have the power connected, what we want to do is plug in a dock cable and this will make the phone turn on without you having to um, reconnect the back of the case. So you plug in the dock cable and the phone will power on. Now you can unplug the dock cable at this point because it's not needed and you don't want to accidentally synchronize with Monica's computer. So 
So function. if this phone turns on, you've done it correctly. Is that pretty much it? Yeah. Okay. And you pulled out if you pulled out the dock cable and the phone's still on, then you know the battery's powering powering the phone. So while the phone's booting up, it doesn't matter how long it takes. You can put the slide the battery in so that it's back in its little bay. You might want to put a piece of tape across the top of your battery connections just to be sure that the case won't short them out by accident, but that probably won't happen anyway. And then you can put the case back on. You want to make sure you reconnect the cable of the power and volume buttons to the main board. It should click into place. And start by putting your Apple logo back in. There we go. Secure that with some more tape, <laughs> like so. Now, you want to put the top of your case on first. Make sure it's nice and even. And then just press the case back on. Might take a little bit of doing, but it'll work. How's that bread going for you, Andrew? Delicious. All right. There we go. That was a lot easier than getting it off. Yes, so the phone booted up. It's working, as far as this phone works anyway. And so your battery, can, your battery was, installation was successful. So what you want to do is do all these steps in reverse, all the original steps. Now what are, what are these screws holding in place? They're preventing the case from being um, slid off. And also they appear to do something with the uh, phone's structural integrity. Because you notice this phone has been dropped and two of the screw lugs on there have actually broken off. So this is how Apple will know you dropped your phone into the toilet after dropping it down a flight of stairs. <laughs> Left on this tape. Okay. Then you want to slide the black piece back on. And this is also kind of difficult to do because the black piece has so many little things that need to fit under the aluminum case and then it needs to fit with other stuff. So, that takes some working at it too. Apple really did not make this easy to do. I wonder how easy it is for them to do. Like if they just have a, a magical tool that just makes it simple. I'm sure that they might, but we don't know about it. So once you've got the, the top of the black piece secured, all you have to do is push it down and you have your phone completely reassembled. This is better to be done on your second iPhone than your <laughs> primary iPhone, because if it does break, you'll still have one. So there you have it. A working iPhone. Working. <laughs> what? It won't launch anything. There it goes. That was awesome. It was being selective. So there you have it. A working iPhone and... Which will no longer function as a phone, but you can put in notes. Yes, you can still put in notes. <laughs> Except that... When uh, you're typing, it will actually crash out, which is unfortunate, but that's all right. <laughs> the generation coming up can't go learn like I learned. It just can't do it. It's outdated. It's done. Forget it.